Hass, we're here in the long run during the holy month of Ramadan to talk about your faith and how you celebrate the occasion. As a first question, can I ask, what does Ramadan mean to you? Yeah, I mean, um, I think for all Muslims around the world, I think Ramadan is uh, an extremely special month. Um, I guess it's a month of um, sacrifice, discipline, gratitude. Um, you know, we're obviously fasting for the daylight hours during the day. Um, so you, you end up um, naturally being very grateful for the food that you have on the table um, at the end of the day. Um, and also the finer things in life, we generally get to spend a lot of time together as family and, and friends. We do a lot of our prayers together. We have a long evening or night prayer um, that we do together. So yeah, there's a whole, um, whole host of things that bring um, the community together, which, is, which makes it very special. And how important is that faith to you and your family and fitting around cricket as well? Of course, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's an incredibly spiritual month, I'd say. So there's always that connection that you find. And, um, you know, although there's physical challenges to it, actually, because of the spiritual involvement, it actually uh, often brings out the best in, um, you know, I, I generally look at athletes around the world and they seem to perform better almost in, in Ramadan. And for me, I'm a big believer, part of that is the spiritual connection that you find yourself um, in. Uh, and you know, for us as a family, yeah, we always try to accommodate, uh, making sure that I'm giving my best to, to both. You talk about that spirituality and almost that introspection. How does that change from, from other periods of the month and, and the year as well? Yeah, I guess um, it's just the, uh, I mean, we, we consider it to be an extremely blessed month. Um, the nights are special, um, especially, you know, we're in the last 10 nights um, as we speak right now, Ramadan obviously comes to an end on Sunday or, or Monday. Um, so these last 10 nights in particular are extremely special. Um, and, and yeah, I guess the whole, um, the whole setting of the month um, is, is one that has a lot of blessing in it for us, for us Muslims. Obviously one of the aspects of Ramadan is fasting during daylight hours. A professional athlete, can you sort of talk us through the process for you, what it entails and, and, and some exemptions as well that you mentioned as well. What, what happens during that month for you? Yeah, so um, we generally have two at the moment because of the, uh, the length of the fast. Um, UK is generally one of the longer ones actually. So um, at the moment it's about 16 to 17 hours, I think. Um, so we'd have our pre-dawn meal, um, and try and make it as big a meal as you can possibly uh, make it. Um, and then another meal at sunset, obviously, when you break the fast. So, so yeah, um, I guess you try and fit two decent meals in there. So that's important for me, making sure that I'm refueling enough to, to be able to perform when I, when I come here. Um, and you mentioned the exemptions. As a traveller, you're, you're exempt from fasting, so you can make up another time in the year. Um, yeah, I'm exempt because you know, home's officially still bought and so even playing home games here, I'm, I'm exempt from fasting, so game days I don't generally fast, I'll just make up later on in the year. And those meals pre-dawn and when you break the fast, what sort of foods are you eating to be able to sort of sustain yourself throughout days, whether it might be training or, or game days? So it's two pretty normal um, meals that you'd have at, you know, probably lunch or dinner or, um, so you try and get your protein, your carbs in. Um, generally what I do find is, especially if I'm training, um, I get more thirsty than hungry. So I'll obviously hydrate, um, have a lot of water and um, yeah, just any kind of fuel. Um, but then sometimes I have to force myself to eat as well because you can fill yourself up quite quickly with, with drinking with, with water. So um, yeah, um, I think it's important to make sure you're, you're getting enough of both. On the hydration front, are you able to, to fuel yourself enough with, with water or whatever the drink might be to, to sustain you easily, or especially when you're do, working do you know hard? Honestly, you actually surprise yourself with how little you, could, you can actually eat because over the course of the month, I'm sure the, stom the stomach shrinks as well, so you uh, naturally end up eating a little less throughout the month. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I know that if I, I almost have to control how much how much water I drink because I could almost have a bottle of water and then I could I could be done for a bit like I feel bloated almost mm -hmm. so um, yeah I have to kind of fight fight it to just have a little bit um, and then make sure I'm eating at the same time as well um, but yeah I guess you, there's like a you know six hour period where you can make sure that you're drinking regularly to make sure that you've got enough for the for the day coming 
And can you share with us a little bit as well how important the, the club's understanding on all this sort of things are? I know when you came to the club there were conversations potentially with Mick about um, your faith and, and what that means for you moving here. What, what does it entail for you that, that Knots, you know, understand what, what is required? Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, of course I've always said that, you know, my faith is a massive part of my life and um, Knots have always been very accommodating, to be honest. Um, obviously led by Mick and Morsey, but to be perfectly honest, I think it's everyone. I think it's always going to be a collective effort to, to have that understanding. And I'm lucky that um, I feel like I'm getting that with the, with the boys and the staff here. Um, I've worked closely with you know, guys like Marsh, who's obviously the psych, um, Pricey, um, who looks after the boys' you know, physical needs generally and, and nutrition and stuff. So um, now we've all been on the same page, making sure that you know, when I've got the opportunities to eat, I'm getting enough in, um, guys being comfortable with, you know, for example, on a training day, I might be fasting, so um, just being aware of, of that. Um, and yeah, I mean, the most pleasing thing for me is is there's been a genuine, um, genuine uh, passion to actually get more understanding of of you know the month and my religion as well. So it's nice. I mean, I think it's it's definitely. I feel like things are moving in the right direction. Um, across the country, which is nice. Yeah, and as you say, you're in the last 10 days now, which makes it an, a, a special time, I suppose, during the month. When you get to the end, you have a celebration. What does that entail? Uh, it's, yeah, it's special. It's the day after, obviously, the, the month fin finishes, um, Eid. So, um, yeah, it's a big, uh, big celebration for us. We generally get together as family, um, have a nice kind of feast and uh, a lot of nice food put on. Um, and again, I guess it's just another occasion for us to get um, get closer together. We have a, a special prayer in the morning of, of Eid Day. Um, and I just feel like it's a real nice, yeah, real nice time to be involved and um, brings everyone close together and everyone's happy and got, you know, kids are buzzing that it's a celebratory day and, and things like that. And like, it's just a real nice um, occasion to be part of.